My semester recently ended and I find myself with much more free time. So two weeks ago, I decided I wanted to learn computer vision in 10 days. Now to start this 10 day challenge, I needed some sort of plan. This is where I highly recommend using some sort of AI to help you create a learning plan. I told ChatGPT my goal. I wanted to learn computer vision in one month. It then spit out a four week learning schedule that I could use to learn computer vision. And after further refining this down into a 10 day span, in an hour and a half, I already had a full plan for what I was gonna be learning in the next 10 days. Let's talk about day one. It should be mentioned that I'm approaching my third year in computer engineering at a university, so my learning schedule may be slightly different than someone who doesn't have much experience programming. That being said, before you start computer vision, it is good to understand that an image is just an array of values, each value representing the respective pixels color, and a video is just a chain of these images. Understanding this beforehand will help you get past that learning curve that you initially run into in computer vision, where you're doing a bunch of image operations and color converting, which is just the format of the values being changed. Just wanted to throw that out there. We can get back to the video. Day one is when I started learning a bunch of the basic functions offered in OpenCV, which is the library that I'm using for computer vision. I then went ahead and learned image operations and converting across color schemes. I then moved on to live shape and color detection. And this seems like a wild jump, but if you remember what I said previously on how videos are just a chain of images, for my code, all I was doing was reading the current frame from my webcam, processing that frame, and then outputting it to the screen. So it seems as if I'm processing a video when really I'm just processing frames very, very quickly. I finished the day off using a face and eye cascading system. I can't explain it past the idea that it is just recognizing patterns in the image. I hope to learn more about it in the future, but I think the depth of it is outside of the scope of a 10 day challenge. Let's move on to day two. On days two through five, I did not have the ability to work much on computer vision as I went off to a robotics competition. I am gonna include these days in the timeline, however, because I did have the ability to practice a little bit of computer vision while I was there. And because learning computer vision in 10 days just has a good ring to it. On day six, I began installing all of the dependencies needed to do facial recognition, which sounds dope, so I thought I should go in that direction. Sadly, after a few hours of trying to get the dependencies down, I thought I had them, but it turns out they still weren't working, so I had to move on. If not, I would not have been able to get much further in this 10-day challenge. Luckily, the dependencies needed for facial recognition aren't really used anywhere else, so me skipping over that chunk wouldn't really affect me later on. My next step was identifying motion inside of a video by comparing frames and just finding a threshold value for the changes in values. And I ended off this day by using Canny, which is just a tool in OpenCV, which allows me to find all of the edges in the image and in turn objects. I was disappointed with the work that I accomplished that day because I spent so many hours trying to figure out dependencies for facial recognition that I didn't really have much time to work on any new things. On day now, before we get into day seven, I'm gonna mention briefly what a convolutional neural network is because I mention it in the oncoming day. I'm no expert, so much of what I'm telling you, I'm going to be reading off of my computer, but I just wanna get us on the same page. So a convolutional neural network consists typically of five layers, one being the convolutional layer, which just detects features like lines or corners or just edges of an object. Layer two is gonna be some sort of activation function, usually a rectilinear function, uh, which just discards all of the noise within the image. Layer three is gonna be a pooling layer, which summarizes the images and in turn makes calculations easier. This could be done by taking small regions, such as like a two by two pixel and converting that into just the largest value and reducing the size of the image. Layer four is a dense layer, which condenses the outputs from the pooling and convolutional layers into a 1D vector and then spits it into a neural network, uh, which can make a decision based on the values that you give it. Layer five is the softmax layer, and it takes the predictions from the neural network in layer four and turns it into probabilities to try and determine what classification you're gonna give a given image. If you're curious and have further questions on convolutional neural networks, I recommend going online and finding someone else who probably knows much more than someone who's trying to learn computer vision in 10 days. Anyways, we can get back to day seven. Day seven, I learned how to utilize convolutional neural networks, also known as CNNs, for image classification and object detection. Additionally, I installed TensorFlow, which is a library used for deep learning applications, which I used to implement my own image classification model between squirrels and dogs. This means I can give this model an image, say it be a squirrel, and it could tell me the percentage of the chance that it is a squirrel or that it is a dog. I knew in this 10 day span that I wouldn't be able to dive deep enough into deep learning as I would have liked. I hope in the future that I can look into it a little bit more because it is pretty complicated and it's again, lies outside the scope of this 10 days. 
On day eight is when things really start getting interesting for me because I installed YOLO v5, which is an object detection model that is pre-trained with hundreds of common objects. But the idea is after installing on my computer, I can use it to identify a bunch of common objects such as a water bottle, a phone, and it can even identify people. After playing around with YOLO though, I moved on to MediaPipe because MediaPipe has hand tracking capabilities, which I thought would be a very cool next step in my learning process. So to finish off day eight, I implemented some basic hand tracking to control some small aspects of my computer, which may be foreshadowing into the day 10 project. On day 10, I plan on doing some sort of final project. I would have liked to incorporate robotics just a little more, but I didn't have any robotic systems on such a short notice. So I was constrained to using only my laptop. After brainstorming some ideas, I thought it would be cool to implement some sort of hand gesture control on my laptop. I decided to go with two choices, one being a cursor and mouse, and the other being a volume control. I started by using MediaPipe's hand tracking, which placed 20 landmarks or points on each hand. To determine the gesture of a given hand, you just compare the coordinates of different landmarks. In my case, I just tracked the base of my index finger, and when the tip of my index finger fell below the base, I knew I was trying to click. This allowed me to have a semi-functional mouse with my right hand, even though I didn't have any dragging capabilities just yet. For the volume slider, it was slightly more complicated. I first searched for the condition that describes my index finger and my thumb pressing together or pinching. I then tracked the distance traveled up or down and then changed the volume accordingly. I also added a line that measured the distance from where I initially pinched to where I was at in the current moment. This wasn't necessary, but I just thought it was really cool. This is not a large project, but it helped me see the progress that I could make in a 10 day span of learning computer vision. At the beginning of this little challenge, I wasn't sure how far I would get or what issues I would run into. And while I'm still a long way from knowing computer vision, the growth that I've seen in the past 10 days is a great reminder that there's so much that can be learned if you just try. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have an amazing rest of your day and as always, stay curious.